Tonight, we're continuing our journey in the shepherd's field, working our way through the 23rd Psalm. Sermon number one, the Lord, not a Lord, but the Lord is my shepherd. That word Lord is Jehovah. And you can see Jehovah titles throughout this psalm. We're going to see one of them tonight. The Lord sovereign is my shepherd. Eternity, time, heaven, earth. The Lord shepherd, human deity, humanity. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He initiates it. Then when we lie down, we can meditate, chew the cud. It's how we grow. Just go through the scriptures year after year. We are valuable to him. He helps us with our fears, with our friction, with our foot. He helps us with our fear. It's a lot of things sheep can fear and sometimes friction. That's with other sheep. I know you don't have friction with other sheep in here tonight. I know you don't. But there might be friction in your family right now, or friction on your job. But he is the shepherd, and he gives us, uh, helps us with fear, friction, and food. And we are called sheep because we're defenseless. We don't have any natural defenses. I mean, you've never seen an attacking sheep, have you? <laughs> you have seen an attacking bulldog. Sheep are directionless. They don't have a sense of direction. And boy, aren't we like that, man. We just, we can, like Fleetwood Mac. I keep quoting them for some reason, but they sing that song, you can go your own way, and that's exactly what you're going to do. It'd be interesting to see where some of those band members are today that went their own way. Sheep are dependent. Sheep are dumb. They just sometimes make bad mistakes. I know that don't apply to anybody here. But we moved on in to He Restoreth My Soul. And so I want to finish that tonight. So would you read with me out loud Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. If you're glad to be here tonight, say amen. amen. Psalm 23, 1 through 6. The Lord, read out loud. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Verse 3, read it again. He restoreth my soul. One more time. He restoreth my soul. Father, thank you tonight that you restore our souls. Lord, anoint your servant to preach the ever-living, eternal, not the words of man, but the words of God. Father, break every chain, for you are a way maker, miracle worker, line of the tribe of Judah, but you are also the sweet shepherd, and we follow your voice. And Lord, you're guiding us, leading us, helping us, moving up among us. And God, Father, we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Tell somebody next to you, you're one of his sheep. <laughs> Now, when you read verse 1 and verse 2, you kind of wonder about verse 3. He restores my soul. And I, I mean, he's got the victory in verse 1 and verse 2. He's like the Lord is. In other words, he didn't say the Lord was or the Lord's going to be. He's, he's in a current relationship with the Lord. Present tense, active. The Lord is my shepherd. That's intimacy. He says, I, I lack no good thing. He says, I'm in green acres. And I'm beside still waters. Man, this, this guy's on cloud nine headed for ten. But why in the world do we need to turn around and he restores my soul? I don't care how much victory that you have in your life. And I don't care how on top of the mountain you are. I don't care how 
how in the clouds your head is, your feet are still on this earth. And we talked last time about restoration, the message. He just restores my soul. He proclaims it. He's by faith. He didn't say I had a, I had a, uh, yea, though I walked through the valley and this and that and the other. Before he even gets in the valley, he says he restores my soul. Before you even get to the problem, he's already working on the restoration. Before the devil's ever stolen anything, the Bible's already decreed that if the thief be found, he shall restore sevenfold. So anytime there's lack, uh, anytime the devil seems to have the upper hand, he's already going to restore it. Amen. He is already, he restores my soul. Uh, he converts my soul. He revives life in me. He causes my life to return. You ever told somebody to just get a life? Tell your neighbor, I got a life. Amen. Restore means to turn back to God. To refresh, to repair. Now, remember, this is not talking to the backslider. This is not talking to the apostate. It's not talking to the Sadducees or the Pharisees. It's talking to those who are in fellowship with the shepherd. That, that there are just times that we need restoration. Sometimes we need to be repaired. Sometimes I just get all tore up. It could be the, the, uh, the, the seasons of life. It could just be the trials that I'm going through at the present moment. But no matter what we're going through, he is restoring us and repairing us. And not only restoration, the message, but the restoration, the mistakes, the mistakes that the sheep make. So, uh, and that's what we're going to pick up on tonight because we gave that to you Sunday night. Sick sheep, stubborn sheep, and straying sheep. Now, sometimes these things happen, but before they ever happen, he restores my soul. Amen? How does he do it? I told you Sunday night why it needs to be done because sometimes we get sick. Sometimes we get stubborn. Sometimes we get straying. Amen. Remember now, I'm, talk I'm not talking about a backslider. I'm talking about the good members of the West Road Pentecost Holiness Church as well. Amen. I'm talking about ordained clergy of the North Carolina Conference of the Pentecostal International Pentecost Holiness Church. By and by, I say amen. I'm talking about the elders and the deacons and the mothers of the church. Amen. I'm talking about the whole lot of us. Sometimes we need to be restored. So how does he do it? Number one, he gives oil to the sick sheep. Oil to the sick sheep. Now I mentioned to you Sunday night how at nighttime he would whistle and the sheep would come back in and they wouldn't just come into the fold, but he would put his hands on those sheep. And I tell you, on a service like tonight, I feel like he's just putting his hands all over me and touching me and helping me and blessing me and how people can go and just go one Sunday out of the month. I don't understand it. I, as Bill said, Brother Bill sang tonight, oh, those one pair of hands, glory to God. And there he's, he gets that little sheep and he's going through and he's looking for bruises. He's looking for lacerations, a scab, maybe even a serpent bite. The shepherd would therefore pull out the oil and pour it in and rub it into that wounded place. Uh, oh, uh, the oil that was to soothe and medicate and heal uh, and, uh, and comfort. Oh, can you say amen tonight? Uh, I mentioned to you about those nose flies. Uh, they were the pest that they, they just, those flies would just pest those, uh, um, those sheep and the oil would be mixed in with tar and sulfur and rubbed on his head and it would protect his head. And I'll get to that later in the Psalm, but it would protect, and we know who the devil is and, and, uh, those fiery darts of the devil and, and, uh, and, and that, that anointing and that oil, uh, uh helps us, uh, when we're dealing with those pests and those sicknesses. And I told you about the Jehovah names of God throughout the Psalms. Well, here we find Jehovah Rapha. The Lord, my healer, Jehovah Rapha. Go to Exodus 15 and 26. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And I'm just going to go fast through these. Exodus 15 and 26. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Psalms 103 and verse 2. Bless the Lord, all my soul, for getting out all his benefits, who forgives uh, all thine iniquities and heals all 
thine disease. Jeremiah 30 and 17 says, For I will what? Restore health unto thee. You know, when, when John G. Lake pastored in Spokane, Washington, they did, it was not the religious um, news media, but the secular news media, uh, people that tried to discredit him, did a study in America, and they found out that Spokane, Washington, there were so many healings that took place in his church. And, and he had a huge church there. This is John G. Lake. They, they reported that it was the healthiest city in the United States of America. Would to God that he would do that again. You know, it's good for your health to go to church. I believe in doctors. I believe in, in medicines as we need it. I don't have to overdo it. Uh, I don't accept sickness, uh, but I do accept the wisdom that God gives the medical community as a healing in itself. Uh, amen. It doesn't matter. The physician is the great physician. Uh, but I'm just here to tell you, you come to Westmoreland Church, uh, and I promise you, your blood pressure is going to get better. Amen. You can't help but get better because they uh, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. He restores health to my life. Amen. Uh, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because he is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord is my shepherd and he restores me. Amen. Acts 10 and 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now, it doesn't say healing all that were diseased of sickness. It says all that were oppressed of the devil. So disease can be a form of oppression of the devil. But I believe that there's also internal wounds. I believe that there are scars that we have in the journey of life, questions that are unanswered. And we need healing is body, soul, and spirit. It didn't say he restores my body. It says he restores my soul. And that can apply to the body. And if you need a physical healing tonight, reach out and touch the Lord for he's passing by the shepherd's calling your name and he wants to rub some of that anointing in you and bring health to your body I wish somebody give the Lord he healed the blind blind Bartimaeus he told the man with the withered hand, stretch forth thine hand. Lazarus had been dead four days. The Syrophoenician woman, he gave her bread when she said, it's not neat for me to eat the, the bread from the master's table. And he said, uh, she said, but even the dogs eat from the crumbs. But listen, Jesus said, I'm not giving you a crumb. I am your shepherd and I'm going to give you bread. He, he healed when they got bit by serpents in the wilderness. He lifted up a serpent on a pole and said, just look. And my friend, Jesus is that one lifted up. And when we look to Calvary, the Lord is my shepherd. He died for my sickness, died for my oppression, died for my sins. Oh, thank God that the Lord will take care of those nose flies. Amen. He is the healer. He gives oil to the sick. Will you receive it tonight? I believe the oil is flowing at Westmoreland tonight. One more time, give the shepherd a hand of praise here tonight. All for the sick. That's why we believe in laying hands on the sick and anointing them with oil. And Pastor Jerry believes in pouring them with oil. He takes literally that scripture in Psalms that says it flows all down to the beard. That's why I shave. Amen. <laughs> I, I, it's symbolic, so I, I don't like my hands being greasy. If I get one speck of oil on my hand, man, it just feels like my whole body is just, but, uh, but, uh, that's, but, and so Pastor Jerry, I'll get a little, a little spot here and lay and he comes over there, he pours it right in. We just go with the flow. Amen. <laughs> oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And that is true. I will tell you that it's true that 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 in the Old Testament they poured oil on people. Now, I'm not saying we have to do that. Do we? <laughs> Bring it on, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I promise you that shepherd takes that oil, whatever amount's needed, and he rubs it. And he is my shepherd. Have, do you feel that oil flowing here tonight? 
Now, I'm going to pick up on a note. He anoints my head with oil. I'm going to pick up on that a little bit later because it's going to mention that again. But that is the way the shepherd restores. He gives oil to the sick. And then number two, the stubborn sheep. Now, we don't need to talk about stubborn sheep, do we? So what does he do for the stubborn sheep? There's oil for the sick sheep. There's a rod for the stubborn sheep. Now, stubborn sheep are the ones that are just bound and determined that they're going to have their own way and go their own way. Now, we used to think of sheep as being calm and submissive, and by most part, they are. They are easily led, but not necessarily so. Sometimes sheep can be very stubborn and mulish, and they are determined to go their own way despite all that the shepherd does. And so the shepherd would go out and find a little sapling, and he would dig it up, root and all, and there would be a knob down at the bottom with all the roots sticking out from it. And the shepherd would take a sharp knife and begin to cut away the roots from that knob. And finally, he would have it down to where it was a little bit bigger than his fist. And he would work it until it was smooth and just the way he wanted it. And what he would do, um, and then he would uh, do the smooth, smooth the entire staff down. And then he would begin to drive nails and bits of metal into the knob until it was kind of heavy and weighted. And it became a very powerful weapon in his hand. The shepherd would be out there on the hillside with nothing to do but to watch the sheep and to practice throwing that rod. And he would throw it and throw it until it became almost a missile. And uh, he, somebody said he would uh, get to the place where he could knock a gnat off a pile of grits 500 feet away in heavy fog. For all you that live in Sims, you know what that's about. Amen. And Elm City. <laughs> and uh, those of you who live in Wilson, you have to be explained that. Amen. But um, he, he learned how to wield a rod like a club or a sword. And so the rod was used to actually protect the shepherd from robbers and thieves that would show up from time to time. And he would, he would use it to protect the sheep from predators like lions and wolves. He would throw that rod over there and, and dogs and scavengers. But sometimes he'd have to use that rod, not on the wolves, not on the, the, the scavengers or the coyotes or, the, or people even. Sometimes he would have to use the rod on the sheep themselves. Sometimes there would be a very stubborn sheep, a, a sheep that was headstrong. That just wanted to go its own way, not willing to follow the shepherd, not staying close to the shepherd. The shepherd would begin by tapping the stubborn sheep on his backside. Then he would become a bit more aggressive and he would tap the sheep on the head or the nose. And sometimes that wouldn't work. So the shepherd would take a much more drastic action and he would take his rod and come up behind uh, the front leg of the sheep and actually break his leg. But as soon as the leg was broke, he would take the sheep in his arms and splint the broken leg to begin to heal him. And then the shepherd would reach down and pick up the sheep and put the sheep around his neck. And he would carry the sheep around for days uh, on, uh, on, on his shoulders until the sheep was mended. He would carry it and nurture it, pour oil into the wound. And once it was healed, he would restore the sheep back to its feet. Mm, yeah, we're talking about the shepherd. Amen. We're talking about whom the Lord loveth. He chasteneth. And we're talking about it'd be better for his leg to break than he, him to be in the stomach of a lion. Amen. <laughs> we know what the Lord knows what he's doing. And, uh, and any of you parents out there used to, they used to, they used to actually punish children, you know, with uh, maybe a, 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 a spanking and, or maybe even a, a belt that would be mildly used. Boy, if you say that now, you're arrested. And, uh, but, uh, but it was not child abuse. It was not uh, torture or torment, but it was a, a, a stinging uh, a reminder of correction. And uh, once this process is complete, something, listen, once that process when that stubborn sheep's leg was broke and he was healed, very interesting, from that day on, the sheep that has been broken by the shepherd and is now healed by the shepherd, in the materials I have studied, this restored sheep now remains very close to the shepherd. 
you would think he wouldn't love the shepherd anymore. But for some reason, he stays close. He remains right beside the shepherd's leg, and he just keeps nuzzling the shepherd. I have discovered that this sheep has been broken and restored, that has been broken and restored, never leaves the shepherd's side. Can you say amen? Look at Hosea chapter 6, verses, verse 1. <laughs> This is what the prophet said. Come, let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, but he will heal us. He hath smitten, but he will bind us up. When the sheep get stubbornly away from God, the, the, the God who loves us will break us. But he will not just break us to destroy us. He will break us to bind us, to cause us to be more in touch with him, closer to him, which is our safety. Every thou shalt not is God saying, don't hurt yourself. Every thou shalt is help yourself to happiness. Uh, Psalm 119 and 67. Uh, Psalm 119 says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept thy word. There is, there, God gives us chastening. Look at your life. Now, there are trials and tests for the best of us, no matter how godly and how holy we are and how close we walk to the Lord. In this world, we're going to have trials and tests, but sometimes the trials and tests in our life are because there's some area of stubbornness, some area of unforgiveness, some area of continually resorting back to uh, old habits, lifestyles, and God is very patient with us, but thankfully, He will cause us to have our leg broke, uh, only to heal us, to keep us from going into greater damage and greater danger. Because you can go your own way. You can go ahead on out there and drugs. You can go on and have that affair. You can. God's not going to ultimately stop you. He'll try to hinder you, uh, but you can hobble on off if you want to. Uh, but it's going to be to your own uh, detriment. Uh, and you'll come at the end of your days and say, what a fool I was. Uh, because I had a shepherd that loved me uh, and cared for me. Amen. Psalm 119 and 71 said it was good. Uh, 119 and 71 says, it was good that I had been afflicted. I might learn thy statutes. This is what I thought. I didn't think you'd be running the aisles right now. I kind of thought after all the shouting, it might get a little quiet about this point of, point of the sermon. But that's okay. Because we need to think about it. We need to look at our lives. And, and you say, well, well, have you got any examples of that? His name is Jacob. His name is Jacob. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob was a, a good man, but he was a rascal. And he, he, he was a stubborn sheep if there was ever a stubborn sheep. And he tried to connive his way into God's plan for his life. God had already told him at his birth that he was going to have the birthright eventually. But he, him and his mama took things in their own hands. And that tells me that godly people can do some, some very unwise things. Yes, amen, amen. I'm preaching to myself. I know you guys don't know what I'm talking about. But, uh, but we got to be wise in the way. We got to trust the Lord. Wait for his timing. You know, don't get ahead of God. Amen. Uh, and wait, I say, upon the Lord. Don't take things into your own hands. Uh, I look back over my life and I see times where critical moments where I jumped the gun and should have waited upon the Lord. And, and, and so Jacob, he, uh, he has a meeting with God. You know what God does? God breaks his leg. In a sense. You remember that? You remember how uh, the Bible says that God confronted Jacob about his backsliding and he wrestled with the Lord. The Bible tells us that the Lord put his thigh out of joint. Put his thigh out of joint. And so for the rest of his life, he walked with a limp. And he had to have a staff. He had to have a walking cane. Now, we believe in healing, Pastor, but there won't no healing to this because God's the one that did that. <laughs> and God, God knew that boy needed to walk on his staff. If he let him walk on his own two feet, he'd walk right out of God's plan for his life again. So God has a... Now, I'm not telling you that God's going to make you sick. Now, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. And I believe what Jacob went through was a, was a physical thing. And I don't think God today literally puts your joint out. Now, he might 
might. He might. You never know what may happen. And, and, uh, and, and you know, you just never know. God might allow you to have, have a small accident in order for you to stay home for a few weeks and, and speak to And I'm not saying God will, will. I just don't know. We'll just talk about that later. It, right now in the pulpit, I don't want to go through any controversy here. But I will tell you this. He may not do it physically, but he'll sure do it spiritually. And thankfully, he will, because all of the rest of his life, Jacob, the Bible says, look at Ephesians, uh, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 21. Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worship. What church? Leaning on the top of his staff. Old Jacob, for the rest of his life, learned how to lean. Learned how to trust God. Learned that God was going to turn the evil into good. I was reading a book about God's timing in our life. And Jacob, God had already shown Jacob that Joseph was going to be a, a great leader. Jacob had an experience with God. He heard those dreams of Joseph. Well, then his brothers came and said, and said, look, and the coat of many colors had blood all over it. And Jacob says, oh, poor me, and, and uh, I'm going to the grave in sorrow, and oh, this, that, and the other. And this writer, which I thought was an excellent point, said, why did he act like that? He should have looked at that garment and that blood on it and should have said, guys, he's still alive somewhere. Because God's already spoke to us that he's going to be a mighty leader one day. And so you go, go yourself out there and don't you come back and see me again until you find him. Now, wouldn't that have been a, 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 the way to, to go? Uh, but sure enough, Jacob, Joseph was alive uh, and God keeps his promise. Folks, we got to sometimes uh, when things look absolutely opposite, uh, God is still on the throne. Uh, if he has spoken, if he has given you a promise, uh, claim that promise. Learn to lean. Uh, don't get ahead of God. And for God's sakes, don't get behind God. When the cloud is moving, uh, move on in Jesus' name. Uh, somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. So the point of point number two is don't be a stubborn sheep. Amen. Just Willingly obey the shepherd, follow him, obey his commands, tr present your body daily, a living sacrifice, stay close to the shepherd, don't let people get between you and God, don't let people tempt you, don't let people get under your skin, trust the Lord, trust your shepherd, and all of God's people said amen. And then finally, not only is there oil for the sick sheep and a rod for the stubborn sheep, there is also a staff for the straying sheep. Now the straying sheep, they're not the, they're not the ones that stubbornly go their own way. They kind of cluelessly go their own way. They're weak. They're careless. They stray. Somebody say the word stray. It's, it's not like you intend to go out and do something wrong. You intend to go out and do this. But you just kind of stray. You kind of get a little away from the Bible, away from prayer, away from church. And and, and, and let's stop right there. Getting away from church, regular church, and 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 for and, and really you need to be serving in church, giving, participating. Uh, me and Pastor Jerry, we can tell you over the years we pastor people, and they don't quit going to church, but the, you'll notice they'll stop giving financially, or you'll notice they'll stop. Uh, resigning ministries, and and, uh, and and sometimes you need a break from ministry. I understand that. But then what's happened is they begin to stray, and you don't see them at church anymore. And then finally, they're, they're not here at all. So we don't want to stray. Amen? So how does the shepherd handle the straying sheep? Well, um, he uses a staff. Now, what is a staff? A staff is another long sapling cut off above the root, it's long and willowy. He soaks it in water or boiling water. Then he bends it over the end. And in the sun, he lets it dry. And, uh, and this would create what's called a shepherd's crook. Has anybody ever seen those staffs with the shepherd's crook? The bin was just big enough to go around the chest of a little lamb or around the neck of a full-grown sheep. With that staff, he would guide the sheep and retrieve and touch the sheep, put it around their neck, and pull them. 
when the sheep would get near a cliff or down in the briars or in the mud, the shepherd would take the staff and lift it. Go to Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 through 2. Psalm 40, 1 through 2. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry, and he also brought me up. Turn around and tell somebody, you're on your way up. Amen. Out of what? A horrible pit. And out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon the rock and established my goings. Aren't you thankful for the staff? I look back at my life again, and I can't say that I've been a stubborn sheep, but I can say that I've strayed a couple of times. <laughs> I took matters into my own hand, <laughs> and I found myself in the muck and mire, and I'm still in love with the shepherd. I'm still a, one of his sheep, but I'm down there in, in the miry clay and in a horrible pit. Oh, but the shepherd he takes that staff and he pulls me up out of the miry clay, sets my feet upon the rock. With the staff, the shepherd would guide, guard, and lift the sheep up to him. Sometimes a you or a mother sheep would neglect her little lamb. You know, sometimes the you would get so concerned with their own needs uh, that they would forget the little lamb. And so the shepherd would see this and use the staff to draw them back together. Because the shepherd knew that if the mother neglected the lamb too long, after a while she would forget it altogether. You see, if we allow the great shepherd, he will draw you back with your family. He will draw you back as husband and wife. He will draw us back as a church when there's confusion in the church. When we fall, when we're weak, when we get away from God into sin and in the briars and the mud, thank God for our shepherd that has a staff uh, that he will use to restore and bring back to him. And all of God's people said, amen. He, and, and I'll tell you, we are to be shepherds among one another. When you see somebody straying, when you see a kid out of Royal Rangers, when somebody misses church and you get a phone call, it's all it is is the shepherd that staff trying to draw you back to the house of God, to the fold. Amen. It's a dangerous world out there. It is the nature of a sheep to wander and stray. It is the nature of sheep to wander and stray. It is the nature of a sheep to sometimes get away from the shepherd. The songwriter said, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. But the good news is, that is, as it is the nature of the sheep to wander, it is the nature of the shepherd to restore. Would you stand with me tonight and love on the shepherd tonight? Love on the shepherd tonight. Are you a sick sheep tonight? And let's pray for you. Let's rub some oil on the head tonight. Are you a stubborn sheep? You just kind of hard-headed and just going to kind of do it? Leave me alone? Well, he may break your leg, but it's only to bring a greater healing, keep you from a greater, a greater catastrophe. Amen? Are you a straying sheep tonight? He's taking the staff and he's lifting you out of depression. He's lifting you out of financial bondage. Amen. He's lifting, he's lifting you out. Now we think, we think that David wrote the 23rd Psalm. We're not 100% sure. But I kind of think it is. Because David was a shepherd. And in fact, when Samuel called him, he was with the sheep. God always calls you out of one sheep, small sheepfold, then you get the call to a bigger sheepfold. When you're faithful in small things, he'll make you a ruler of many. But I also think David wrote the psalm because of, did, did David, did he always do it right? <laughs> did David always do the right thing and perfect thing? When you read the story of David's life, very few times, or many times, he strayed, didn't he? And he strayed a lot, didn't he? I mean, he messed up. He really got into the muck and mire. But I'll tell you what, 
you look over David's life, and you can see not the faithfulness of the sheep, but you can see that God was a faithful shepherd. And that's why David could say, I know I've sinned with Bathsheba. I know I've numbered the people. I know that I've put my hand to steady the ark and tried to do things my own way. But the Lord is my shepherd. He hasn't kicked me out. He hasn't left me to die. He has blessed and highly favored me. Somebody lift your hands as Pastor Jerry comes up tonight and praise him. Come on, praise him. He lifted me out. I want you to tell your neighbor I'm on my way up. Amen. I said I'm on my way up. I'm not staying down. I've got victory in Jesus. My shepherd, my savior. Hallelujah. You know that song, I want it far away from home. I want it. You have to sing it and I'll just follow it. Not off the top of my head. What's the chorus? Okay. I wandered far away. From God, Lord, I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I've trod, Lord, I'm coming. coming home I'm coming home never more to roam Lord open wide thy arms of love Lord with us church I'm coming home. I'm coming Come on, home. home never more to wrong Lord open wide thy ever been there? I have. Well, I got saved. I never wandered away again. Never had a desire to wander away again. I wandered far away